Hello everyone, today we're not going to rescue one, not two, but three Kerbals, two in low Kerbin orbit and one in a very high orbit about Kerbin, and we're going to do all of them with this vessel that you see right here, and this is going to give us an opportunity to talk a little bit more about orbital manipulation, specifically the topic for today is going to be orbit phasing. Orbit phasing is a technique that not only gets you into a specific orbit, but gets you into a very specific location within that orbit. We'll be getting to all of that very, very, very soon. As for this vessel, this is a brand new vessel that I had to build because I needed more Delta V to get this particular job done. But it's built upon principles that we have discussed in previous tutorials. In fact, this vessel is very similar to one that I built a few episodes ago, if you want to go back and check that one out, or as always the link for this vessel is down there in the description if you want to download it and play with it yourself. But I really don't want to spend much time with it, instead what I want to do is talk about the people we're going to rescue. So this here, this is us, and here are two of our rescuees. You can see they are in an approximately 80 kilometer orbit about Kerbin, but our third one is this fellow way out here, Burfurt. Now, I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not doing this in the most efficient way possible, not in terms of fuel and not in terms of time. And the reason for that is because I want to talk about some more orbital mechanical principles, specifically orbit phasing, which is a way of playing with the periods of your orbit so that you can not only get yourself to the altitude and orbit that you want, but get yourself into the correct location on that orbit. If you see the more efficient ways in which to have done this, by all means, leave comments down in the description and we can talk about that. But what I want to talk about is this orbit phasing thing, and we're going to start with going out here and finding Burford and rendezvousing with him. And this is really no different than the rendezvous we did before in low Kerbin orbit. It's just a further distance. 7.5 kilometer closest approach. That's definitely the, from way out here, that's the closest I'm going to get. That burn is coming up in uh, 18 minutes. You can see it's a 3 minute and 45 second burn. That's because uh, we just got ourselves a tiny little terrier engine here on the bottom. And this is a relatively large vessel. But, you know, thrust isn't all it's meant to be once you are in orbit. Okay, we're just going to reduce throttle here for the last bit of this. And I know when I did the rendezvous video a while ago... I was watching this from map view, but then I remembered, of course, this is showing me my close approach distance as well. Let's turn the thrust down on here so I can do this final tweaking simply looking down there and just go until I have my closest approach as small as I can get it. I know I got it down to 7.5 while playing with it. I should be able to do quite a bit better than, well, we'll see what we can get. Probably not much better than that. Oh, 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 we'll keep going. It's getting close to 6. Now it's starting to creep back up. So we got 5.8 kilometers. There we go. Uh, again, minimizing the amount of time you spend in map view, maximizing the amount of time you spend out here. To me, it's always a good trade-off. And although fundamentally this is pretty much the same process as when we did a rendezvous in low Kerbin orbit, there are a few differences that I think I should draw attention to. Number one is to note here our encounter speed of about 400 meters per second. Yeah, we're going to be closing in our target much quicker than before. So that means it's much more important for you to begin slowing down earlier. And what you really want to pay attention to is that time to target. It's far more important than your distance to your target. So make sure you keep an eye on that. I started this burn about five minutes before I got to my target. That's probably a little bit cautious, but it's better to be overly cautious than the other way around and find yourself kind of zipping right past your target. And as you're slowing down, watch that time to your closest approach. You want to always make sure that you can push it up or at the very least keep it stable. The moment you find that you this time is going down, no matter what you do, is the moment you're realizing that you're just going to blow right by your target. 
Now, the one advantage actually of doing a rendezvous way out here far away from our parent body is that space is much flatter out here. Our orbits are far less curved. So you're actually approaching your target in at this distance pretty much a straight line so you can put that retrograde icon right on top of the target icon and you know you're going to be going pretty much straight at your target. And in case you didn't realize it, I should also be mentioning that as you're going through this process of matching your target's velocity, you're also going to be matching your target's orbit. So when this is all said and done, we're going to be in that exact same big orbit that Burford started in. But you know what? I think it's time now to match our velocities and meet our newest Kerbal here. So Burford is a scientist. All right, Burford, let's get you out of your tiny little capsule. I'm not exactly sure how you managed to get yourself up here. It's always a bit of a mystery, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't look like that capsule really is much of a spaceship. Exactly. How do all these Kerbals end up in these precarious situations? Uh, I guess it will always remain a mystery. All right, and board. Okay, so we are now in this nice orbit. And what we want to do now is get back down, let's center this on Kerbin, and get down and meet these folks. Now, what you can do is set up again a the same idea, a rendezvous to get right down to here and set up an encounter and do it that way. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. This is really what I want to talk about in this video. Let's say you don't, you know, for instance, you, you really don't have the option of making this periapsis be anywhere you want it to be. Like, for instance, if you're coming into, um, say, for instance, you want a rendezvous with something in orbit about the moon. I'm just going to turn up my thrust here and bring this down, right? Where your periapsis actually is going to end up relative to something that might be in orbit of about the moon, you don't have any control over that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just flat out burning retrograde. No real, um, I'm not targeting any of these. All I'm going to do, is look at this orbit here, 79. We'll just bring this periapsis down to... Uh, let's call it 79 kilometers, because that seems to be pretty close to what this fella's orbit is. Without any thoughts of where exactly this periapsis is going to end up. Alright, that looks pretty good. So here's my situation. I'm coming in. Uh, this is my... I would like to meet up with Debnard here. So let's set Debnard as your target. And you can see here that we are quite a ways off from Debnar. Now one of the issues is that, well, our relative inclination is 2.7 degrees because Debnard is in an equatorial orbit while, you know, we're in this slightly inclined orbit. So we need to fix this. The place where to fix this is not necessarily right at the ascending node. That's if you want to completely match uh, your target's inclination, which you can or can't do. That's up to you. But I'm going to actually just pick kind of the halfway point here, right about here, add a maneuver. And it's at this halfway point. See, when you do a burn, you're not you're affecting your trajectory ahead of you and the trajectory behind you. So if you want to affect your trajectory the most that you can. In this case, I want to bring this trajectory down. The best place for you to do it is about halfway between where you are now and where you want your effect to happen. So I'm just kind of generally putting it right there. And I'm going to click on it. There it is. And we're just going to bring this down. And the whole purpose of this burn is simply to bring my periapsis down to match up. I'm just doing this by eyeball to match up where uh, Debnard's orbit is. And that seems pretty close. Okay, I don't want to completely match inclination. All I want is my periapsis to intersect with Debnard here. Now, if you want to, you can absolutely match inclinations at either the ascending or the descending node. We actually talked about that in my last episode uh, about how to get inclination of an orbit to be exactly where you want it to be. But here, it's not a big deal. So, now... 
Let's take a look at our close encounter indicators. Here's where our target is going to be when we are right here. Clearly that's not good, but we can actually fix that by adding a maneuver here right at our periapsis. So, move it so it looks like it's right at the periapsis. And we're going to adjust the period of our orbit so that we'll come around, do one more orbit, and then adjust our period in such a way so that when we come back to here, we will be exactly matching Debnard. And it seems like that's a really complicated thing, but it's not. All you have to do is start burning retrograde, start doing that, and watching those close encounter indicators. See how they're moving around, right? So like for instance, right now, if I push it this way, let's actually push it this way. So we're there, there, they're coming very close right now. But here I'm going to do a bunch of orbits before I end up meeting here. I want to do just one more orbit after this. So we're going to keep burning retrograde and give myself some more energy here like that. And it's dancing around a bit, but that's because, you know, we're bringing this smaller and smaller. Now, by the way, if you find that this is not dancing around, it's because your maneuver node is actually ahead of where this closest approach indicator is. I know right now there's a lot of icons right on top of each other, but if I move this a little bit this way, notice that uh, this is moved. And if I start going retrograde, notice how now it's not changing. And it's just confused because it thinks you're on this orbit, not the next orbit. So all you got to do is move this forward just a little bit in time. If you have that situation where this isn't moving, move this forward just a little bit in time until you see that jump. I only had to move forward one second. And what I did is I just moved to the point where I was just ahead of this other target icon. And now when I start reducing this more, keep doing this, now you can see that that target icon is dancing around. So we're going to keep going down. Oh, I was close there, but I'm going to keep going. I want to get this as low as I can and still come close. Oh, going by again. Can I get her? Can I get there one more time? Oh, I think I can. There, it came pretty close. I don't think I can do this one more time. See, I'm going to get to a point now where if you watch my apoapsis of my projected orbit, it's going to end up being below what my target is. And clearly, that's not what I want. So now all of a sudden, this isn't working at all. That's okay, we'll go prograde. But now what I have is I've set up an orbit. Once I get this nice and close to each other, let's, ah. <laughs> uh, lots of data coming out, but I'm really looking at this intersect distance right here, this separation 62.9, 7.1, well, let's dial this right down, 6.6, 6.4, .6, 6.7, 6.4 kilometers is as close as I'm going to get, but from where we are right now, that's not a big deal. So what are we going to do? We're going to burn this burn, and that's going to put us into this orbit, and the period of this orbit is such that we'll come around one more time and then exactly match up with our target. We call this process phasing the orbit, where you're playing with the period of your orbit to not only get you into a specific location, but to get you at a specific location at a specific time. Oh, that's it, it's starting to come out. We got a close approach 6.4 kilometers. We'll uh, watch it from map view here so you can really see what's happening. We're coming up here, but as we are moving up towards Apoapsis, we're losing speed, which is allowing Debnard to catch up to us. And it's actually kind of interesting. We're now picking up speed. So actually, Debnard will pass us. And there we go. We're coming in. But then we're now actually going faster than Debnard because of our fall from way up here. And so we'll end up matching up. Kill the speed off. And we'll meet Debnard. Debnard's another scientist. Oh, Oh, if I need many. <laughs> it's always luck of the draw what you're going to get. That leaves us one last Kerbal to get. Seedorf. All right, Seedorf, let's set you as a target. Now, the thing to notice about Seedorf is it's in the same orbit as we are. We have to somehow get ourselves from here to there 
but still in the same orbit. If I just time warp, it's not going to work. We're, we're, our periods are pretty much the same, so we're just going to follow each other around Kerbin, and that's not going to get us anywhere. So what are we going to do? Well, again, what I need to do is play with my period. So what I'm going to do is simply burn prograde right now, and start to raise my apoapsis, raising the altitude of my orbit. Again, as you raise the altitude of your orbit, you will be increasing the period of your orbit. In other words, you will be slowing yourself down. And as you slow yourself down, Seedorf here will be going at the same speed, so that will give him the opportunity to catch up to us. And this flips around the other way. If you want to increase your speed what you need to do is burn retrograde that speeds you up and allows you to catch up to a target but in this particular case we're so close to being above the atmosphere uh, that's not going to work for us so our, really our only option is to slow ourselves down and I know this feels counterintuitive it being you know um, burning forward, speeding yourselves up in order to make yourself go slower, but that's kind of the way it is. So I'm watching my closest approach indicators. I might not be able to, I'm not burning very quickly, I do have to be conscious of how much uh, Delta V I have left. <laughs> I don't, you know, because I do have to get myself back, so I might not be able to do this in this orbit, but what we're just, no matter how I'll keep right. Oh, oh, it's starting to work here, I think. As long as you don't burn more fuel, you don't use up more than half of your delta V that you have remaining, this is going to work just fine. That's really what it comes down to. But I can see here it's coming. Notice I'm doing this without the aid of a maneuver node at all. So. Boom. Okay, let's reduce our throttle here right down very little and again we can watch this from here our closest approach is 4.8 kilometers let's burn a little bit further see how close we can get that so four point we're down to four kilometers three two Oh, that's it. About a kilometer separation, it started to go back up again. Did that without the benefit of a maneuver node at all. All we got to do now is go around one orbit and we'll meet up with our target. And again, you can see what's happening here. We're slowing down. Seedorf is still going at the same speed. And we've adjusted our period in such a way that when we get back down here to periapsis, we are going to be right beside each other. And are we going to get the trifecta of scientists? Let's find out. Seedorf is a scientist. Of course Seedorf is a scientist. Uh, it's always this plague of riches when it comes to these rescues, isn't it? And while we get our three new scientists safely down to the surface, when we talk about what we looked at in this episode, again, the main topic was orbit phasing. And although we looked at this in two quite different situations, and there's many other situations where this skill comes up, the idea is still the same. This idea of playing with the period of your orbit to manipulate your position in your orbit. And in the process of doing this, we actually looked at a couple of rendezvous where our rendezvous were high velocity rendezvous, so we talked about some of the things that are a little bit different when you're meeting at high velocities and some things to be a little bit more careful about. But with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I hope that you found it useful, and as always, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.